This is Algebra 2, Chapter 4, Section 3, in which we will be solving quadratic equations again, but this time we'll do it by factoring. And we know how to factor. We learned that back in Algebra 1, and we relearned it in Section 03. So if you don't recall your factoring, you're going to want to stop here, go back and get the video from 03, and rewatch it because it's fair to expect you to know how to factor by this point in your careers. Now the key is, before we start factoring, we need to be equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, we have to move things around to get it to zero, and we'll have one like that here in a few minutes. But then our job is to factor it. And as we learned back in 0, 03, the first thing we look for is a common factor. Is there anything in common between these things? Sure there is. There's a 5 in both of them, and there's an x. So if I factor the 5x out, that leaves me 4x plus 3. Now the trick is to split it into two problems. Take each of the factors equal to 0. Well, this one's easy. Divide by 5, and we get an answer for that one. This one we have to move the 3 over first, and then divide by 4. If you want to give me a decimal there, that's fine. But we get our two solutions to the problem. Okay. Our next one here, we'll look for something in common, but there's nothing there. And then we have to recognize what we have. We have something squared, something squared, and they're being subtracted. So that's the difference of two squares. And again, like we learned back in 0, 3, we know how to factor the difference of two squares. x squared minus 64 becomes x plus 8 times x minus 8. Split into two problems. Subtract 8 over and we get one answer. Add 8 over and we get the other. Okay. The hard part is the factoring. From there, it's easy. Now, we have a couple here where they're not equal to zero. But that's okay. We can deal with that. We can get zero over here. All we have to do is add the 30 to get it to the other side. Now, we need factors of 30 that add up to 11. Well, you got 1 and 30. Those don't add up to 11. 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6, hey, 5 and 6 add up to 11. We need a negative 11, so negative 6 and negative 5. Split into the two parts, two problems, and then solve each one. And presto, we have our two answers. Okay. Same idea applies here. This isn't equal to 0, so we need to move the 8x over. Now, since we have an a value that's not 1, we have to do a little bit more work. We need factors of 15 times 1 that add to make 8. Now, 15 times 1 is 15. 1 and 15 doesn't do it. 3 and 5 does. So 15x minus 5 and 15x minus 3. Then we need to reduce, like we learned in 0, 3. We'll divide the first one by 5 and divide the second one by 3. Split into the two problems. Add the 1, divide by 3. Add the 1, divide by 5. And again, decimals are acceptable as well. So I'm going to let you take a minute here, pause and try this one. You're going to have to do some heavy factoring to make it work. But then once you get your solutions, come back, check and see how you did. So we're going to need factors of 12 times 15, which is 180, that subtract to make 8. In time you go through all the factors of 180, you get to 18 and 10. 
subtract to make 8, we need a negative 8. So we need negative 18, positive 10. 12x minus 18, 12x plus 10. Reduce. The first one can divide out by 6. The second one can divide out by 2. Split to the two problems. Bring the 3 over and divide. Bring the 5 over and divide. If you went decimals, this would be 1.5. This would be negative 0.833. So if you have decimals, that's okay. Just make sure they're the right ones. Now the other big idea we're going to have is we're going to be asked to go backwards. They're going to give us the answers and ask us to go back to what was the equation. So if they give me these two values, negative one-half and eight for the solutions, we need to work backward. So it would have been x minus negative a-half and x minus eight. Okay. Well, minus negative a-half is plus a-half. Now all we have to do is distribute. So we distribute that out, and I collected some terms. But then there's a funny rule. We don't like to leave fractions in these. So I'm going to insist on this. You need to clear that fraction out. To get rid of a fraction of a half, the best thing to do is multiply everybody by 2. Okay. I can't emphasize this enough, folks. If you leave fractions in your equation, I will mark it wrong. Clean up your fractions. Don't leave fractions in your equation. Guarantee you some of you will still do it. And say, why? And I'll say, go back and watch the video because I explained it. You can't do it. It's a mathematical convention. So get rid of your fractions. Okay. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.